All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to transfer detail from a texture over to a three-dimensional object so that when you go to 3D print it, it looks amazing, okay? So uh, this thing represents a lot of detail. Um, here's a scan that I did using uh, Metashape from Agrith. And if you any watch any of my other videos, I kind of show you how to do it, but this is the end result and you can see these cracks and crevices here and what we're going to do is transfer them over to a mesh because if you look at the initial scan on the left that's just a texture so if I was to turn that texture off I wouldn't get any of those details but over on this side I do have those details I didn't sculpt any of those details in I made a thing called a cavity map, and we're going to learn how to do that in this video. All right, so this video is going along with the series of photogrammetry, um, and this video is dealing with detail. Okay, so how to recoup the detail that you lose uh, with the workflow, and there is a way to do it via texture. So out of Meta Shape you can generate a texture. It's under a workflow, texture, generate texture. And with that, you can get an amazing amount of detail. Uh, there's a magic number. It's located in the interface. And what you want it, that number to be is 8192. Okay. I can't show you that interface because I don't have Metashape on this computer. But um, when you go to workflow, texture you'll be asked for this number okay and then you just get go ahead and hit OK and it'll generate a texture all right so long story short um, as soon as I get when it comes out of the program it's all jacked up as far as like the orientation is everything so we have to first fix our orientation fix everything just like we did in the last video this is an ant hill log. It's really super detailed. There's a lot of cracks and crevices in it. It's probably the most detailed thing I've ever scanned. And right now it just needs to be fixed orientation wise before I can even zoom in on it. Okay, so uh, let's go to objects, set origin, origin to geometry. Okay, that'll get it there. Uh, let's go into edit mode. Let's go into mesh, Let's separate by loose part. All right, let's go back to object mode and then choose it, the biggest piece. Go select invert and then X delete. All right, cool. So now I have just the mesh I'm working on, none of the other stuff. And now I just need to rotate this so it's upwards. If you hit N on the keyboard, it'll bring up this interface. N is in Nancy. You can put zero, 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 and it sends it to the center of the scene. And I can start kind of showing you the level of detail of this. So this was a, a log that had ants in it. <laughs> it's pretty detailed. Okay, so first thing we need to do is get it cropped off here. Add it back to edit mode. choosing vertice, I'm just going to go into this tool, the lasso select tool, and I'm going to choose to only have this much right here. Now if I turn this on, it'll go all the way through, so let me do one more selection with that on. OK, 
Okay, so this right here needs to be on. That way it allows you to select back faces. So X, let's get rid of vertices. So that's a lot of vertices we got rid of, a lot of polygons we got rid of. It's just unneeded data. Okay, let's go back to object mode. Boom. Let's turn that back on. Nice. So what would be nice is to recoup all the detail that was lost here. Even though there's a lot of detail on this piece, there's still a lot more in the texture. So out of Metashape, you can export the texture. So you would just go File, Export Texture out of Metashape. Well, that loads over there. I'll load it over here. So there's the details. You're like, wow. <laughs> so you can see all these little cracks and crevices and stuff like that that need to be kind of put back into the model versus that, versus that, okay? What I need to do is put the cracks and crevices in here, but I don't want to spend all day sculpting those details back in. So what I'm going to do is load that texture into Photoshop and do a few tricks. So I believe they call this a cavity map um, that I'm going to be making. So I'm going to take a texture and turn it into a cavity map. This workflow would require Blender, ZBrush, and Photoshop. Or at least you know, how to do those in different programs once, once I get this done. You might be able to do this in GIMP, who knows. This texture is 8192. It's a really big texture. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is kind of like launch Navigator and just kind of zoom in on an area that has a lot of cracks. Yeah, right here I got some parts, I got some cracks here, I got some darker areas, so right here would be a good example. All right, so I'm going to duplicate this, then I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Black and White, and I'm going to be stealing all the color information out of it. While I'm stealing it, I'm kind of paying attention to what, where the black channels are. I feel they were in red or yellow. So what I'm doing here is I'm ex making these as dark as possible. See how they're kind of a gray tone right now? Here's my darkest blacks. I'm trying to get this to become my darkest blacks. And this not my darkest blacks. And I only have these sliders. So you can see if that one does that one. That does that. pretty good. So there's my darkest blacks. Okay, so I really would like grays out of here altogether and just the darks. So I'm going to go and duplicate this one more time. And then I'm going to go to Image, 
adjustment levels. And I'm going to try to eliminate gray out of the equation. There we go. So, as best I can, there it is. Alright, so this is what the map looks like, and now I'm just going to export this. Export as. And I'll export as a JPEG. Great. And I'll call this a cavity map. Okay, so back to Blender. Now I could fix this hole right here while I got it. There's a hole at the very bottom. And I think I will do that here. So, edit mode. Select non manifold. Control F. And then say fill. That'll fill all those holes with some polygons, just like that. All right, so the new mesh that I got now needs to be exported and imported into ZBrush. So object mode, click on it, export OBJ. Hill. Selection only. Export. All right. <laughs> so let's go over to ZBrush and import that in. Hit yes. Okay. All right. So there we go. So it already looks like it has a lot of detail, right? Okay, <laughs> so what we do is, uh, first off, let's load the texture in. So we go to Texture Map, click this button, Import, and I'm looking for the Cavity Map. Okay, then we go to UV Map. And we go to adjust and flip it in vertical. All right, we turn on MRGB on, material channel. And we're going to transfer the texture over to that channel using polypaint. So polypaint, polypaint from texture. Okay. Then I'm going to turn this mesh into a DynaMesh using geometry, DynaMesh, 4096, click DynaMesh. So now it has a sufficient enough polygons, 6 million polygons. Cool. So we got a texture on it, and if you want to see what the texture looks like a little bit better, here I'll change the material over to something like flat color. So here's what the texture looks like. 
All right, so over here, I'm going to go masking. I'm going to go mask by color and say mask by poly paint. Then I'm going to zoom in. It's like click zoom and drag. Just something like that. And then I'm going to kind of play around with these tolerance values so that it's just dark where there's cracks. So. Oh, and black is a hundred percent value. Black's 100%. Gray is a middle ground. And then white is no value whatsoever. So that looks pretty good. I got some little grays, I got a little whites, and I got definitely a lot of blacks. Uh, missing a little bit right here. I'm just going to play with it just a little bit more. So I got some more cracks right there. It should work. So let's hit OK. OK, those are the areas and the values of how they're going to be masked off. And then I'm going to go into a thing called deformation. And then I'm going to go to inflate and inflate it by 1. And how much you inflate it is up to you. Um, I could go a little higher, I can inflate it by one more, but you can see that if you actually, you have to type it in or it will explode. So I put one more in there just to kind of show it off. All right, so what did that do? Well, um, if I can zoom in on it a little bit further, move in. You can now see all those details got pushed into the mesh. Okay, I'll take the mask off. Masking, clear. I'll try to frame it as best I can. Zoom into it as best I can. This program is not very friendly when it comes down to zooming and rotating around. <laughs> you can see that, especially with this much polys. So now we have to take and eliminate the 6 million polys that we have and keep all the detail. So we do that by going into Decimation Master and doing a pre-process current. And we'll put these meshes side by side in another in Blender and you can see the details. All right, so now we go to the percentage that we want to decimate. I'm going to say 10% because it's 6 million. Uh, this will maybe bring it down to 600,000. So that's where I kind of want to be. So now we just go decimate current. Oh man, nailed that. All right, so it's a flat shader. We destroyed every amount of detail when it comes down to uh, the material. So I have to go back, and uh, there's the detail. So now we're going to take this and export it out. So export. I'll put a D here for decimation. All right, so now in Blender, Let's move this one out of the way. And let's go get the other one. All right. So when we go to 3D print something like this, what we want to do is have an over-exaggerated amount of detail so that it shines through. Um, you can kind of see the structure of the noise. And I think maybe... 10% was a little aggressive, but 
but you can definitely see how there's cracks and crevices now. Uh, there's these little indents now, and it matches quite nicely the original photo, um, which I don't, I do not have, but um, you can see that via texture. So now I have these cracks and crevices in place over here. Didn't have to sculpt them in, and voila. So that's how you recoup detail based on the texture using Blender, Photoshop, and ZBrush in order to pull it off. It's a little workflow I used to have when I was doing uh, modeling and rendering for like game design stuff. But now it works for 3D print too. So I hope you enjoyed.